these living things that live forever. Oxford physicist Vatko Vitrov is trying to understand how intelligence oh, no, about you, a Gray. system that operates on just a I don't few know. basic ground rules. So no chestnut test. patterns. It's a very <coughs> and yet it's well, by a few of I tried to get a hold of that guy, you know. You really have only 16 pieces on each side. And, and these, 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 these people, they just don't know their probabilities. I'm sorry. Now we're going to have to turn them down. So I can explain things better. Now, you know, I tried to contact these people about my time machine and everything else, and hell, they won't listen to me. I found out that Fred Norris is the uh, guy that might give me the uh, clue on this, but what we're going to see here, instead of that program, is what's going on. We got a uh, fluorescent light, a little fluorescent light, and it's underneath 1,000 feet of mega cable speaker wire. Oh, we got a scope, and that scoping is made across that 1,000 feet of Radio Shack mega cable speaker wire. This wire is a flattened ribbon wire. It can store electric charge a la Tesla's coil for electromagnets etc. Now what we've negotiated here is a possibility where according to Tesla's coil of electromagnets and all that um, well We've negotiated a possibility, say, I think that just screen went out there, anyhow. Well, poor me, um, it's rather late at night. Get this thing done and over with. Okay, back to the job then. What we've negotiated then is we had 20 volts across these 20 layers on our wiring we have negotiated on that 1,000 feet of wiring uh, half of the layers will have one volt across them and half of the layers will have two volts across them the windings skip ahead by two layers they are actually in the confusing term by filler well what we do there is when we call these these are eight of the meter coils that we're going to use to make the 666 machine there see now now the 666 machine has already been demonstrated to store time but to give you an idea we stack some check, uh, checkers there and notice that on the white phase it spirals around an axis notice that the blue phase spirals around an axis notice that the red phase also spirals around an axis that's how these eight coils are going to be manipulated to distort time. But right now we can already demonstrate somewhat a distortion of time with the coils stacked exactly five of them, 1,000 feet, 50 feet per wind. Now, when you start marking it down in the book and everything, and you figure out, well, half the layer's got one volt, if there's 20 volts across it, Half the layers got one volt across it, and half the layers uh, uh, got two volts across it. If we applied uh, magic square technology to the whole problem, we could make one squared plus two squared plus three squared all the way up to 19 squared, and then our resonant frequency would go down considerably. So if, well, how can we make a coil? its resonant frequency go down so far that it might be the, uh, the resonant frequency of the earth near 10 hertz well we're looking at those possibilities but for now we're just going to try to finish this out turn that calculator back on come on we got 1.5 cycles the scope is set at 
two microseconds per division, making it a 20 millisecond sweep. So since we've got 1.5 cycles at that 20 millisecond sweep, we conclude that we are receiving 75,000 hertz from that friggin' small neon light bulb, which emits radio waves. All gas bulbs emit radio waves, but the receptor will change their frequency. And we'll show that real quick, too. Okay, uh, I'm trying to do everything by myself, holding the camera. Let, let's let's go here and try to manipulate this thing. Okay, we're gonna turn the light off. Oh, there's the scoping without the light. We're gonna uh, turn the light back on. Notice the scope and water changed a bit. Don't seem like we've got as many multi strands as before. We can make the uh, frequency of the signal by ground connection decrease by holding the hand on it. That's set at one tenth of a cycle per second. Uh, what we want to do here there is take, we got. 1,000 feet in there and we're going to go down and we're going to change that to a reception for 800 feet and to do that all we're going to do is take the bottom wire move it up one coil now we look at our scoping now we have more than one and one half cycles in that time period we have one and three quarter cycles we'll go down here do that one more time if we can didn't rehearse this one not at all so we need to go to the top one or the next one uh, that looks right And now we see decrease. Now we're only dealing with 600 feet of the wire. And now with 600 feet of the wire, we see almost two cycles. So that should show that when we decrease the length of the wire on the receptor, that the frequency goes down. And the, volt, the voltage is set at one-tenth of a volt. This is late at night. Uh, these are spurious observations made uh, certain times a day, made... Uh, it seemingly deliver certain different amplitudes on the scope perception but if in turn we placed an external capacity onto um, these things we'll put it back now to the full 1000 feet if we can keep everything looking there where was I at certainly I don't know okay Is that did I do the wrong thing? No, I didn't. Okay, we'll put that back for full reception at uh, one thousand feet. Once again, we have one and a half cycles. If in fact we took a parallel plate capacity and put it in parallel with that signature at 0.1 volts per division and we found out that that capacity reduced the frequency to half of what it was then that would be the identical capacity that is comprised with the internal capacity of the coil construct thus you could use this method uh, to determine by using the scope in a gas bulb to excite the EM what the internal capacity of the coil is. Thank you.